An hour's drive north of Amsterdam is the region of Friesland, Netherlands, and it was in this territory where the newly canonized St. Titus Brandsma was born and raised. To better understand his origins and impact, we follow his trail of sanctity by visiting the town of Bolsward. At the edge of the town of Bolsward is the dairy farm, still operated today by the Brandsma family. This monument, just outside the house, informs pilgrims and residents out for a stroll that this is the site of Titus's childhood home. Among the village's canals is the Detied Cultural Museum, where, on the second floor of what used to be the former city hall, the St. Titus Brandsma exhibit holds artifacts from the saint's life. Inside, we meet Gottfried van Aghoven, an expert on St. Titus. This is the Titus Brandsma room, where we have an exhibition that has been set up especially for putting Titus in the spotlight on the occasion of his canonization. The connection between Bolsward and Titus is the fact that Titus was born in Ugo Kloster within hearing distance from the belfry of St. Martin's Church. And he was baptized here. He was born, baptized, celebrated his first mass, buried his parents, and attended all kinds of celebrations. Here lies the baptismal register of St. Martin's Church, where it is written that Titus was born and baptized. He received the names Anno Sjord Titus, legitimate son of Titus and Titia Bosma. So already, then he was called Anno Sjord Titus. So with the name, he would also carry as friar. Titus Brandsma is an inspiring saint for me because he is a very versatile man. And he is a man of depth. He is profound. He had drawn this mainly from his contemplative life, from his life as a Carmelite. At the local St. Francis Parish, which was built while Titus Bransma was a priest, the banner that adorned the facade of St. Peter's Basilica during his beatification in 1985 now takes up its place right here. Father Arjun Boltzma shows us a chapel that was added near the entrance of the church, where pilgrims are invited to pray. Since he became a blessed, we have a little chapel here in remembrance of him. Of course, there are no real relics of him. I think rather special. We have an, an, uh, an urn, it's called in English, I think, and um, there are some ashes from Dachau. Of course, probably not from him, but the remembrance of Dachau, he being killed and also cremated there, is for us, is for us very important. Father Titus Brandsma taught philosophy at Radboud University in the town of Nijmegen. He served a one-year term as rector in 1939 and was also a journalist writing articles for the local Catholic newspaper. When Nazi Germany invaded and took control of the Netherlands in 1990, his influence and role in the community made him a target of the Third Reich. He wrote a lot in newspapers and he was also a very important advisor for the bishops and of course for the people making these newspapers, the editors. He was the one who tried to keep the Catholic newspapers Catholic in this time of war. So he tried to make sure there was no NSB propaganda in this Catholic media. Well, that was also the reason, one of the reasons, the main reasons why he was in prison and at the end, he was killed. After being transferred from one prisoner work camp to another, St. Titus Brandsma was martyred at Dachau concentration camp just outside Munich, where he was killed in a gas chamber and cremated. 
he died because of willing to be true to the truth of human dignity, of the faith. For me, I think there are several aspects how he uh, dealt with the Second World War, how he was fair to people, he, he stayed true to the Catholic faith, also in the sense of the dignity of every human person, Christian, Jewish, doesn't matter, every human person has his own, her own dignity, and that can't, can't be betrayed, and he stood for this. St. Titus Bransma from Bolsward held the world's attention on Sunday as his canonization banner was displayed over the main door of St. Peter's Basilica, as he and nine other blesseds were declared saints by Pope Francis. This moment for the church is a pivotal one, as there are many more heroes of faith and truth in heaven, like St. Titus, to seek out for future generations.